so thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm, I'm presenting this for uh, Linda Sandalis at Duke. She had another uh, international conference she had to attend um, on uh, VCA. Um, she was the first author of the paper in 2007 that really defined the um, classification of uh, vascularized composite allographs. Um, that it really only has uh, four grades, uh, and it, it mostly is based on acute uh, findings so far because the chronic uh, changes at that time weren't as well defined, and there still is data being collected, and that was the main thing covered by uh, the, this uh, talks in this conference. Um, chronic uh, rejection vascularized composite allographs was covered by uh, John Kanatakis uh, from France, um, and he pointed out that there are a number of uh, VCAs have been performed in a variety of organs, um, and uh, you know the, the numbers are still limited, though 120 of the um, upper extremity and 39 of face, for example. Um, acute uh, rejection episodes are quite common, and uh, you know the, the microscopic changes uh, are formed uh, are based on the 2007 score, but the chronic uh, changes are becoming more defined, um, as you can see here. And there's an international registry of hand and composite tissue uh, transplantation that defines this. Uh, Ten-year survival is actually a pretty decent, um, uh, and 97% for the patients and 87% for the grafts, uh, based on a, um, a recent European uh, position paper. There are a variety of clinical and uh, histologic uh, manifestations, and he uh, covered some of those. Um, and he showed some uh, very uh, interesting images of, of these. Um, um, as you can see here, a face allograft patient um, with a lot of inflammation in the um, in the in the skin, um, and, and um, the patient also um, uh, developed an EBV lymphoma, um, and so immunosuppression had to be decreased, and, and that led to acute rejection episodes. Um, uh, eventually, cirrhotic and um, other skin changes uh, eventually de develop, and. Um, a large vessel, though, which are, are often the focus of other organs, are, are hard to get in, in, um, in these uh, organs. And uh, a lot of times there's no uh, DSA. Um, and dermal sclerosis can also occur, as you can see here, with uh, narrowing of dermal capillaries and adnexal loss. And uh, sometimes, there, though, there may not be uh, much infiltrate of inflammation. As you can see here, there's a paucity of inflammation in all these images. Um, uh, thrombosis is an interest uh, of a lot of um, uh, groups, um, the skin capillary thrombosis during rejection. Um, as you can see here in, uh, with the arrows pointing out the, uh, the foci of thrombosis. And uh, eventually lymphoid aggregates can occur, and it's been described in other organs, tertiary lymphoid organs can develop. And, and this was shown in a, a recent paper in 2014. Uh, I wasn't that very long. Um, and imaging uh, modalities are a big interest in this uh, field. Um, this is an uh, MRI uh, of, of the patients. Um, and you can see that uh, uh, this shows that um, vasculopathy uh, eventually develops in, these, in many of these patients. Um, and this was a paper that just came out this year, 2019. And, um, and these imaging modalities can provide a non-invasive method for detection and their objective over time. Antibody meter rejection is not uh, clear. Um, it contributes to the development of uh, graft vasculopathy, um, but circulating DSA are often not detected in chronic rejection. So there may be other causes, and also C4D um, is not always uh, uh, systematically assessed or rarely reported. So, um, but and, and, it, and even C4D negative AMR exists, and possibly the patterns just aren't well defined. Uh, Hemoral uh, allurate reactivity does occur in these patients, though. So um, uh, he pointed out his uh, from his experience from Lyon and Louisville and Oxford, and, and DSA does uh, have a role in the development of histologic lesions. Um, um, and chronic rejection and graft losses are likely, but not yet formally proven. And uh, there are a variety of uh, management uh, for chronic rejection and. and uh, 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 Basically, uh, point out that you know they're they're similar to other organs and and uh, you know but they can be uh, rejection can be prevented through uh, adequate immunosuppression and early treatment of the rejection and also patient adherence um, and avoidance of factors that may contribute such as ischemia, reperfusion, injury, um, trauma, and smoking um, and also tolerance inducing strategies have been used such as mixed chimerism with bone marrow based immunosuppression. And uh, chronic rejection has a, 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 you know, it needs a better definition. And 
uh, the best diagnostic test is possibly a deep uh, skin biopsy, but there are, uh, you know, eventually not, uh, obviously non-invasive methods uh, such as radiology and um, gene expression, possibly in more microRNAs, nano uh, engineering, and nano But obviously, this needs uh, better, uh, more study, and, and the numbers just aren't there yet. Um, uh, Dr. Cynthia Drakenberg covered eosinophils in the rejection of these uh, vascularized composite allografts. So, um, obviously, eosinophils have a role in other uh, organs, and she actually provided, pro provided a really interesting summary of other organs, which I, I don't have time to go through. But um, you know, in the, in the VCA setting, though, it, it, it's not quite as uh, clear. Um, it, it could be important to recognize. Um, it may play a role, uh, and it may respond to uh, steroid treatment. Um, uh, but you know, it, it, uh, it's it's del difficult to establish threshold, thresholds because uh, you know um, you know it's there's just not enough data from the VCA setting, and, and many of the uh, we had a discussion, and some people just have not observed that it that much. But but it does I think need further study. Um, Dr. Gibson from uh, the Mayo Clinic uh, covered cutaneous GDHD and skin rejection, and, and they have similarities, um, obviously, um, uh, to rejection in uh, VCA and uh, GDHD. They both have interface inflammation, um, and they have eczema type changes, like in planus, lupus type changes, pigmentary changes, sparanoid changes, and, and uh, possibly uh, chronic rejection uh, can develop from these things. And um, there's differences, though. Um, you know, the, the vascular inflammation in VCA that, are the, that cuffs the vessels is a big uh, thing to look at. And then the low-grade GVHC may be helpful to long-term grass survival in allo transplantation of bone marrow. So um, it's eventually, uh, there, though, in, there's a hyalinizing vascular occlusion in VCA, which can lead to a, gra uh, a threat to grass survival. And the removal of the graft um, in VCA um, can remove the disease um, that uh, the GVHD type changes that you can get in some uh, VCA type uh, patients. Um, Dr. Amair from the Mayo Clinic pointed out sentinel flaps, which can be useful for uh, monitoring uh, G um, uh, VCA patients. Sometimes a sentinel flap is, is inserted, um, and this is, can be a site for protocol biopsies. Um, However, it's different. It has a different exposure. So a lot of times there, it's placed, for example, in the groin, and it doesn't have sun exposure. Uh, the care is different, and the anatomic site is different. And um, you know, the, the, it's it, it also it requires another procedure. You, you need a, a separate site of, of surgery, and there's perioperative morbidity. Um, and additional donor tissue uh, could tri contribute uh, a stimulus for uh, immune response. And the optimal site is, is patient specific, and um, and possibly for for face grafts, um, it could be useful though. So um, possibly this needs uh, further consideration. And uh, Dr. Agarwal from uh, Dallas pointed out the Baylor uh, University Medical Ex uh, Center experience for uh, uterine transplants. Um, they they found uh, several uh, about nine uh, living donors, two failed though. Um, they do cervical biopsies to monitor this, and they have 163 biopsies. They, they do follow-up biopsies at one and two and four weeks, um, then every month. And uh, grading is based on previous experience. Dr. Moley um, presented another year at our conference, and he, he pointed out um, that um, their experience from Gothenburg, Sweden, on, the, on the, uh, their year in, uh, transplant experience, and he's, uh, the, the classification in Baylor is somewhat based on that. Uh, perivascular information um, was not included in the prior uh, system, so that was included in this current system. Um, and, and as you can see here, that they look at uh, multiple features and uh, uh, grade it from normal to severe, looking at stromal anemia, spongiosis, and uh, capillary neutrophil uh, sludging, and the separation of the mucosa from the underlying stroma. And that's basically the things that they see in preservation and reperfusion injury. And then uh, grading for rejection, they also look at similar features, interface inflammation, spongiosis, and stromal inflammation, the vascular damage, and epithelial and apoptotic bodies, and again, uh, graded from indeterminate to severe. And interface, interface inflammation can be a feature of note in, this, in these uh, patients also. And they developed a, a number of features that they've looked at, and, and I don't have time to go through those, but uh, I see, and they, they are doing C4D staining and grading that. Um, Ivy Rosales from uh, Mass General Hospital in Boston and Harvard Medical School pointed out um, their experience in both humans and um, in um, 
in animal models. And um, they, they, she revisited the uh, pathologic scoring system they've developed. It's, it's much more um, in-depth than the current BAMF classification. It's possible that this could be integrated into a new BAMF uh, classification. Um, so she provided recommendations and she uh, based this on her large animal experiment, uh, experiments and also their clinical biopsies. They look at a number of features, epidermis and vessels, adnexa and arteries, and, and they've uh, looked at pigs. Um, they, they look at, they have uh, a very systematic scoring that she's developed with Dr. Bob Coleman there at Mass General, um, looking at perivascular inflammation, epidermal involvement, and vascular involvement, it's much like the kidney system. Uh, they look at a lot of um, assist, uh, features, perivascular inflammation, epidermal involvement. They've um, established thresholds based on their um, studies. Um, and again, they look at epidermal involvement perivascular involvement and, and also, epi, uh, as you can see, epidermal involvement. Um, they've even seen endotheliolitis, which is not in the current system, but possibly needs to be integrated, the vascular involvement. And they also have looked at thrombi, which is becoming a bigger uh, feature of interest in these. They look at chronic uh, allograft vasculopathy, also similar to the kidney. Um, they look at endoarteritis and endotheliolitis and also capillaritis. And they've looked at uh, chronic allograft vasculopathy. As I mentioned, and they they have a lot of animal data, and these biopsies show that um, uh, you know the, the initial scan biopsies of rejected allograft show higher pathologic uh, component scores, um, and again they have uh, nice they they demonstrated their reproducibility of these um, features as, that I've discussed, and and that's listed here, um, and uh, again they, they she showed nice images from um, their um, animal models. And she, she says that a semi-quantitative uh, system might maybe um, uh, integrated into the BAM system. So that, that's something that might come in the future. Um, and they have looked at, uh, uh, they have done a penis transplant at uh, uh, MGH. And so that she presented their experience um, of uh, the patient has had rejection and has been treated. Um, and she also presented their um, uh, experiment, uh, experience again in non-human primates and also um, experience using a, a lattice set possibly as a um, immunosuppression technique with bone marrow transplantation to uh, possibly induce a, a tolerance. Um, uh, however, the, uh, the penis transplantation and also the, these uh, models uh, actually have shown arteritis and vascular lesions, so she discussed that. And, um, and she also discussed the uh, work of another group by Dr. Um, Brondocker here, and they've also seen um, uh, some uh, capillary thrombosis, which uh, needs to be studied more, and, and she presented that, um, as you can see with the arrow there, the thrombosis um, in these. And, um, you know, the, the, uh, she presented uh, work uh, possibly uh, pointing out the significance of uh, vascular alterations in these uh, VCA patients uh, and also animal models. And this is from a paper that I won't go through the table here uh, in the interest of time, but uh, it's a nice paper by. Uh, Color and uh, the senior author Pluck that um, is came out this year, looking at uh, a lot of different vascular changes. So there are uh, reviews in the literature reviewing that. So possibly the data is getting there, uh, and reevaluation of patterns needs to be done and, and possibly integrated into the uh, BAMF classification into a, another uh, meeting paper possibly, and longitudinal analysis needs to be performed. And they have a nice group there. Um, and lastly, uh, Dr. Christina Kaufman uh, from Louisville has uh, extensive experience experience in these um, uh, humans. Um, uh, and, and she basically has presented her work in prior uh, meetings. But in this meeting, she presented the work of this International Society of Vascularized Composite Allo Transplantation and their nice work. Um, and possibly uh, working on a definition of chronic rejection in BCA. So possibly this can be integrated into the BAM. Um, and they have a nice uh, group, obviously Dr. Sindalis is, is part of that group. Um, and it, uh, this, this paper is under review at the Journal of VCA. Um, so possibly um, this could be integrated. Um, some things that um, uh, are, are, are focus of, of this are, are similar to the clad that's seen in the lungs, the chronic um, vasculopathy um, uh, that's seen in the heart also. And so possibly um, chronic rejection needs to um, integrate the chronic vascular changes that are seen in other organs and um, histologic evidence um, that that, that uh, is manifested by. 
and uh, definition for what for, uh, constitutes preserved normal allograft function without histologic evidence of chronic rejection. So they're, they're looking at a variety of things with this classification. And they, um, they um, point out that there's a, a, a spectrum of changes such as preserved normal function, hist histologic evidence only with no functional loss, but also um, uh, histologic with functional, uh, without functional decline and eventually um, histologic evidence with functional decline, which is the uh, chronic, uh, the final um, uh, classification. So there are a lot of unanswered uh, questions in VCA, which I, I don't have time to go through, but she discussed that quite nicely. And uh, she summarized that by pointing out the uh, working group, this chronic projection working group that they have. Uh, they're collecting data from as many VCA uh, recipients as possible, and possibly refining the chronic projection uh, criteria and additional um, uh, areas of uh, for their focus uh, group. And possibly looking at, uh, they're going to look at chronic uh, capillary thrombosis, as I mentioned, several groups have looked at. The timing um, of the um, mechanisms and also ischemic vasculopathy, um, anywhere from nine months to nine years, is it, is it the same? Is ischemic change uh, the same as uh, the chronic uh, rejection type changes? And are there separate mechanisms that lead to focal versus confluent involvement? People, uh, several at the meeting pointed out there could be focal involvement. So. Um, uh, that's the end of the class, uh, and if we have time, but I'm going to the rest of the time. So thank you. So uh, it's my pleasure to welcome, I think, the first ever uh,